Today we are at the Mumbai Trans Harbour Link, India's longest sea bridge, which will be completed in the next few months. It is said that this 22 km bridge is going to be a game changer for the entire Mumbai metropolitan region. But how and what's special about this bridge? Let's find out. The construction of the sea bridge began in April 2018 and now 95% of the MTHL work is completed. Once fully completed, it will connect South Mumbai with the Raigad region, reducing the travel time from 1.5 hours to just 20 minutes. The cost of the project is around 18,000 crore rupees, which was funded by Japan International Cooperation Agency. And with this huge amount, Mumbai Metropolitan Region Development Authority MMRDA, has developed an engineering marvel. MMRDA has used orthotropic steel decks to construct the sea bridge. The route where the ceiling is built is one of the busiest navigational channels in the area. Hence, to facilitate the movements of merchant vessels, 70 orthotropic steel decks are used that have the distance between two piers three times longer than the norm. Apart from this, a lot of concrete and steel is used for the ceiling. Like about 85,000 metric tons of orthotropic steel deck steel was used, which is equivalent to the weight of 500 Boeing 747's aircraft, followed by 1,70,000 metric tons of reinforcement steel, which is equal to 17 times the weight of the Eiffel Tower. Nearly 48,000 km of PT strands were used for the MTHL, which equals 4 times the diameter of the Earth. And next is 9,75,000 cubic meters of concrete used. It is nearly six times the concrete used in the Statue of Liberty. These were some features of the sea bridge. But how this sea bridge will help Mumbai and its people? To know that, we spoke to SVR Srinivas, who led this massive project. So this is supposed to be a 22 km bridge. What's going to be its economical impact on the region, Mumbai metropolitan region, sir? That's a very good question to ask because it is not just a transportation corridor. It is and will be an engine of economic growth for two entities. One is Mumbai and the other is the mainland of India, especially the Mumbai metropolitan region. So what this bridge does is, actually it brings the mainland within a distance of 12 to 15 minutes. You know, all, the, all of us know, in Mumbai 15 minutes or any city for that matter is nothing. I mean, so, so sometimes uh, even uh, Jogeshwari east to Jogeshwari west takes about 20 minutes, right? right. So if you are able to cross from Mumbai to mainland in 12 to 15 minutes, which means, which means in effect, in realistic terms, in reality it means, actually we are uh, adding a huge land parcel to Mumbai. It is not just a transportation corridor, we are adding land. So just imagine a virgin land is added to Mumbai, what will happen? So the, now the sky is the limit and time is for us to create a new growth centre that side. So how will a common citizen who can afford a private transport will be able to use this bridge? Because but, uh, there is thank, as well. thank you for asking this question because you see, generally the tendency is not to allow public transport in sir. Buses are not allowed and all that. But I have discussed with Chief Minister and Deputy Chief Minister. Uh, so both of them strongly said that we should go and encourage public transport here. So buses will be allowed. We are also working on a pattern whereby we can do a separate body for uh, applying buses here to airport and all that. But in any case, either way, we will go for public transport also and a common man will be able to use this. This bridge is going to be a, a, a blessing for all the South Mumbai people especially, yes. as well as for the people who live in the eastern suburbs, they can take the Eastern Express Freeway and jo uh, connect Joanne, to this yeah, bridge. Correct. But how people of the western suburbs will be able to use this bridge in a quick exit? For that, you asked a very, very relevant question. When the bridge lands here, we are also connecting by another bridge that's called, uh, the, we are in Shivri, it lands. From Shivri right up to Varli, there is a new bridge we are constructing. It's already under construction. So 30-40% work is already over. So it's called Varli Shivdi Connector. So from you can go from this bridge to up to Varli. From Varli you can go right up to Bandra. Already Bandra ceiling is there. And from there you can just go to Western Suburbs. So Western Suburb people also can use it. In fact, so this is one bridge which is useful for not just people of South Mumbai, but also entire Mumbai, including Eastern Western Suburbs. And also, of course, the rest of India as well. How are you feeling about this? Who all were the people who were involved in making this particular bridge? And what do you have to say about that? See, main thing is a project, a humongous project of this scale and size and complexity 
would not have been possible but for two major institutions first main institution which helped us is government of india honorable prime minister had actually given immediate approval to this and gave sovereign guarantees and direct disbursal to mmrd from jaica and second is the state government the then state government headed by sri fadnavis ji honorable the then chief minister and present honorable deputy chief minister actually they have made it possible without state government nothing would have happened without approvals so that is the main thing so that required lot of decisions to be made which were not happening for decades together it happened the decisions were taken but on the other hand we also have a, a fantastic team see we had about 50 60 teams but let me tell you we all worked as a single team so kudos to the team as well so yeah that is how the thing is now coming true where yeah. can we expect this bridge to be completely available to the people of mumbai uh we have now connected last week to the mainland okay and i must also tell you honorable chief minister sri shinde ji is to come here many times and uh, he said we should finish it by november so even our deputy chief minister also said we should finish by november the state government is saying that we should finish by november end of november so i think we are ready for it and so so that it can be used from december onwards perhaps this year apart from being an economic corridor this six lane sea bridge will also comprise three new features unprecedented in indian infrastructure history first the sea bridge will have an open road tolling system with the help of this feature vehicles will be able to pay the toll tax without stopping or lowering their vehicle speed second the location of the mthl is one of the habitats of flamingos hence to prevent disturbance or damage to the flamingos habitat the mthl team deployed reverse circulation drilling for pile foundations this technique was used for the first time in india the habitat of the flamingos is still wholly intact and third the mthl team has used special crash barriers on the sea bridge which are tested in seol regular crash barriers take the impact of the crash however this special barrier will push the car back on the road so this india's longest sea bridge will be operational by november december 2023 it will not just have the common citizens to travel from south mumbai to the raigad area in just 20 minutes but it will prove to be a game changer for the entire mumbai metropolitan region